This is Kathy Beal of EmpowermentUnlimited.net with bonus astro insight for the Jupiter-Neptune square. This is an astrological aspect that is strong throughout almost all of 2019, and it has the planet of expansion and grandiosity and optimism and more, 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 whipping things up with the cosmic fog machine and the planet that unhinges us completely from worldly existence for good or for crazy making. This aspect was exact in January. It will be exact on June 16, which is what prompted this video. And it will be exact again at the end of September, but it's just an ongoing factor. And what inspired me to create this spread, which I call what the H is going on, was some difficulties that a Gemini friend was having if you end up liking this and would like your own personal version of it, look for the link below. So first off, our current perception, and that is the tower. Things blowing up, the way we look at things getting shattered and not being able to do anything about it. Interestingly, the tower is represented astrologically by Mars, which is in contact with Neptune this week and also by Uranus, which is shaking things up in a very concrete and worldly way right now. Now, as for our perception at this moment of looking at the cards, I will tell you that I have tinkered with the lighting many, many ways. And I, in fact, have professional lighting shining on this video right now, and it doesn't matter what I do. Nothing's quite in focus, astrologically appropriate. So, something we're not seeing. This is the card of metamorphosis, of cycles absolutely changing. This is the card of Pluto, the lord of death and rebirth, absolute metamorphosis. We are perhaps not really seeing just how fundamentally things are changing. Our structures, our infrastructures, our institutions, our government. Another way of looking at what's going on, the Six of Pentacles is a card of reciprocity, of generosity, of having enough that you can give away to others. It is also traditionally the bread cast out upon the waters comes back manifold. In some way, we are reaping what we have sown. The challenge, three of pentacles, happy card, people running, dancing, enjoying being together. Now, is the challenge that the collective is ignoring things and just off, la, 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 having a good time? Or is the challenge being able to still enjoy life despite what is going on? The support, the ace of cups, this is a card of grace of hearts opening, love is a support. There is support from other realms. In some decks, the um, Holy Spirit, the dove of the Holy Spirit actually falls on the cup. Look at the outdoors here, the beautiful sky, the fact that there's a mountain, there's water, there's green grass. Support is internal, support is love, is love, is love. Support is in nature. Unresolved issues. Oh, this is interesting. Six of Wands. This is a card of public victory and validation and acclaim. A giant pat on the back. So is the unresolved issue that we are not getting appropriately validated? That inner children are running around screaming for attention? This could be some cleanup work from the Leo Aquarius eclipses that went from 2016 until the beginning of this year which had a message of paying attention to who gets you and who doesn't and staying away from the situations where you're not being adequately valued. And the gift, now this is curious, the Four of Pentacles. Now look at this guy, does he look happy? No, he's shielding himself and he's hanging on to that big old pentacle in the middle. The Four of Pentacles is a card of miserliness, of stinginess. And the gift in everything that's going on right now is that we are being called upon to be incredibly mindful 
of how we're using our resources, our thoughts, our energy, our emotions, our time, our money. What are we putting them in? And spend them very, very carefully. Not everybody who comes to the door gets to have it opened. What can we control? Here's an odd one. Eight of cups. Notice how many cups are there and they're all lined up in this nice, beautiful way. The situation actually does have an awful lot to it, but there's one cup that's missing. And the guy's going off into the mountains for contemplation to think about the one thing he doesn't have to go looking, to go maybe on a vision quest. What can we control? We can walk out of situations. At least emotionally, we can walk away. We might still physically be in them, but we don't have to pour our emotions into them. What can't you control? <laughs> the world is the card of the end of a cycle. Uh, the soul coming full circle, dancing within her limitations, can't control what's going on, like where we are in life, how we got here. We can't control the moment that we're existing in. We can dance in it. And if you want to take this absolutely literally, we cannot control what's going on out in the world. A helpful point of focus. Interestingly, this card is the card of Sagittarius, which is the sign that Jupiter is currently in. It is the card of the alchemist. It is taking things that look like they don't have anything to do with each other and making something beautiful of them. It is a card of therapy and mediating and finding balance, temperance. Helpful point of focus, your own healing, your own inner balance, possibly even again, going outside. And where is this heading? Well, now, isn't this interesting? Nine of Cups, this is the wish fulfillment card. This is, and this is definitely earthly. This isn't like off in La La Land or something. This is right here. Look, and he, this guy has been enjoying quite a bit. You can see he is pretty heavy and he's also kind of smug and happy and well off. Nine of Cups, going through this process, we will somehow get something that we really want and that we actually emotionally really enjoy. Maybe everything gets whittled down, but we find a point of focus. We find what matters to us in the mists, in the clouds, and get something that has great heart meaning to us. Now, how to work with this. Play what if. Why not envision the most outrageous future for yourself? Throw logic out the window if you pay attention to current events. Logic doesn't seem to be around very much anyway, so why do you have to be beholden to it. So play games, make like you're four years old, lie on the ground, stare at the clouds. I've been saying this in my Astro Insight podcasts and to people face to face, just play what if. Imagine the most insanely, impossibly wonderful future for yourself, for the world, for the kind of society you want to live in and pull some magic down on this earth. And you might be very surprised and you might just get what you ask for. Like to have your own? Look for the link in the box below.